doing? What up? It's your boy Chips Ahoy, your man 50 grand is Scott Stockton back with Scott Stockton Photography and today I'm out of the office. We out of the cramped office and I'm bringing you a lens review from somewhere really cool. I figured that'd be fun. Get you guys out of the house, show you some cool stuff while also talking about one of the best lenses I've used. And I would have never thought I'd say this about this lens, the Tamron 20 to 40, but I am. Stick around. Let's check this place out and let's hear about this lens. Okay, so the first thing you have to talk about when you're reviewing a lens is the build quality. Like, is this thing going to make it? Is it going to be able to withstand some water and things like that? I can tell you right now it can and it will. This thing is weather and moisture resistant. Uh, even it has a USB-C dock, which is also weather and uh, moisture resistant. Uh, so you don't have to worry about anything there. Uh, it's got rubber grips just uh, for the dialing into the focal length as well as manual focusing if that's something that you wanted to do. Comes with a lens hood, good lens cap, weather sealing. Uh, it's light. I mean, it, it feels, it's got a good little weight to it. It feels like it's made of really solid equipment, but it's very light. Like, so for me, when I'm blogging and I'm trying to be uh, running and gunning and being on the go, this paired with one of my A7 bodies, the A7 IV of the three, is a perfect combination, nice light package. It makes things easy for me just to grab it and go. Another thing I like about this lens with the build quality and it having a USB-C port is that you don't have to go buy a dock. You don't need to go buy an adapter or anything like that to connect the lens to, to then connect it to a computer in order to do firmware updates or any kind of manipulation you wanna to make to the throw or anything like that with this lens. You already have a USB-C port already added onto it. You just plug it in log into your computer and make the changes you need. I love that about this lens. Another thing I love about this lens is the minimum focusing distance. So from 20 to 40, you can get as close to six inches to 11 inches. Now, while this isn't a macro lens, and while this is a lens that's probably more geared for maybe running and gunning events, street photography and stuff like that, I use lenses like this if I can get close enough when I'm shooting weddings to get details. So I love that the focusing distance isn't so incredibly big that you can't use it for situations when you're trying to get up close details and things. Dude, your boy is sweating so bad out here. This is gonna be the nastiest review of any lens ever, probably. Uh, I'm already drenched, I just started. I'm probably gonna be wringing about 10 pounds of sweat out, out of this shirt as soon as we're done here. So the build quality can be that of something that is built like a shit house, and that is great. It can withstand falls, it can withstand weather, and that's great. But that means nothing if the AF performance is crap. Good thing about this lens is that the AF quality is amazing. It's a third-party lens, but it operates like it's a native lens. Uh, I've used this on multiple weddings. I've used this. It's the main lens in all the vlogging and filming I do, uh, and the AF you wouldn't know that it's a Tamron lens or any other kind of third-party lens. It feels like it's a native lens, fits straight onto these Sony bodies. And the autofocus is just, it's just lightning quick. Like, I, I never miss. Uh, everything's tack sharp. Um, it glues straight to the face and the eye immediately, just like it was a Sony lens. Now, something I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go back into, like, a dark room and put up, like, graphs of, like, colors and numbers and shit like that and take photos with the focus point on the, the middle and see if things are in focus at the corners. I'm not gonna do that. I've, I've used it in the field. That's the only thing I'm gonna be doing. I'm not gonna be doing lab tests. Uh, I'm not going in dark rooms. I'm not doing any of the silliness. I've just tested it in real life photo shoots, real life weddings. And I can tell you that from edge to edge, just from the things I've been shooting, it's tack sharp. So when talking about this lens, I think the most interesting thing to talk about is the focal length. It's a very interesting focal length, a 20 to 40. I can't remember the last time I've ever seen a lens that was a 20 to 40. 
or something like that. Like I couldn't understand what Tamron was doing with this lens. I just truly couldn't. I had a friend of mine, he and I would talk with each other like, well, we love Tamron. Like I just don't understand what's going on with that focal length. Is it trying to compete with focal lengths like a 24 to 70? It's getting you a little bit wider, but doesn't have the reach of the 24 to 70. Is it trying to compete with lenses like that? Could never figure it out. Uh, got my hands on it though. And uh, at first I was worried that the 20 wouldn't be wide enough to get the wide scenes that I needed. Uh, whether it's creative wide shots, whether it's reception shots, uh, wide shots to take in churches and cathedrals and things like that during receptions. I was worried that 20 wouldn't be wide enough. But in fact, I think it's perfect wide. In fact, I've used this lens alongside with a Sigma 14-24 to and never found myself needing to go to that 14 extreme. Now the reach, you're only getting to 40. Obviously that's not as good as like a 70. Um, you're not getting that deep. But it, with Sony cameras, like if you wanted to turn it to a crop sensor, you could get more reach. You could get up to 60 at 40. Um, so you can get more reach. There's other ways to get around it. I think that 20 to 40 now has become, strangely enough, my favorite focal length right now when I get out and go shoot things. So. Obviously, I don't want anybody telling me I'm talking rubbish. They, Scott, you're talking nonsense. You shoot portraits. You'd rather be with that Tamron 35 to 150, get the compression, get some blowout, or your 51 to uh, Sony G Master, get that, uh, get that bocaliciousness going on in the background. And while I agree with you on that, I do love that for portraits. But if you think about a wedding day, outside of bridal portraits, outside of groom portraits, outside of bride and groom, outside of that, you're kind of journalistic for the entire day. You're capturing events as they happen. And you have to ask yourself, like, do, am I shooting at 1.2 all day? The answer is no. So a lens like this, a 20 to 40, which would be perfect for a getting ready room, which would be perfect for so many different parts of the day, is a 20 to 40, is that focal length great enough for me to get everything I need to do on a wedding day or for events? Absolutely. All right, so when you're really trying to figure out why did Tamron do a 20 to 40, you need only ask them. If you check their website, they said that this was a category disrupting lens for zoom lenses. That's what they said. They said they wanted to build something that was an everyday lens, something compact, class leading in size and compactness. And they have done that. This is a light lens, beautiful lens, produces amazing images and video quality. And it's super light, great build quality. Like this is truly an everyday lens. This is the lens, like I've told you, that I grab every day before I leave the house because I can use it for my vlogs, I can use it for video, I can use it for photo. Like it's truly an everyday for everything lens. Okay, so now I think we really need to start talking about uses. What kind of uses can we get out of this lens? Like, and, and, and let, me be, let me be detailed about this. So for me, obviously I'm a wedding photographer, I shoot events. What can I do with this lens with that? Obviously wide shots. I just told you about the minimum focusing distance. I can get detailed shots with this lens and I have gotten all these shots with these lenses. I can get creative wides because 20 is plenty wide enough. I can vlog with this bad boy. It's an everyday lens for video and photo. I can vlog with this at 20. And I'm gonna tell you what, I think 20 is a better vo uh, vlogging focal distance than like a 14 or a 16 or 12 or something wider. Cause then you start getting crazy distortion at the edges and you have to be perfect with trying to keep yourself center. With the 20, you don't because the distortion isn't that bad. So I prefer it even for vlogging. I, I love to use it for my wedding receptions uh, on the dance floor. I keep it at 20 and get wide. I get low, I get high. That's where I get all the action shots, the dancing shots and things like that. I use it for 100% of my vlogging and I use it for a good portion of my wedding days. Literally, I'm not a Tamron fanboy, but with two Tamron lenses, you can cover all the events you want. You can cover all the weddings you want. And I'm talking about the 20 to 40 which I'm currently shooting on, which I'm currently talking about, and the Tamron 35 to 150. You can be a full-time event and wedding photographer with just those two lenses. Another great use is street photography. You can take this perfect for street photography. It's wide enough to take in big scenes, but then you can punch in at 40 and uh, get some more details on certain aspects and things like that. I use it for that. I used it on my trip in Seattle. I'll show you a bunch of photos there where I use this for street photography. It's just the everyday lens. I've told you about it. We've talked in detail why I think this is an everyday lens, a beautifully built lens, great optics. So for me, the uses for a 20 to 40 is everything. It's an everyday lens. As with everything, it's got to make sense. We got to come down to the dollars. This lens is going to set you back $699 um, for what it is with a constant 2.8 from 20 to 40. 
uh, I think it's underpriced. I think the quality you get from this thing, you see immediately, when, whether you're doing video or photo, you're gonna know that it's underpriced. Uh, comparatively to other lenses out there, I won't even get into the G Master 12 to 24, like the price of that thing is outrageous. Uh, you can look at Sigmas like 14 to 24 and things like that, and you're looking at over a grand. I think it's a, I think it's a value buy. I think if you need a wide and an everyday lens, this Tamron 20 to 40 at 699 is a damn steal. This lens will forever be on my camera, forever be in my bag, uh, until Tamron comes up with like a lens that's a 20 to 150 at the same size and weight. This bad boy's gonna be in there. So thanks for tuning in. As always, please like, please subscribe, please leave a comment. Do you think this is worth it? Do you think 699 is too much for a lens like this? Let me know. Let's have some dialogue. Let's have a little community in the comments section. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. So an unsavory part about getting outdoors is you get these life jackets. This whole area right around them and including them smells like sweaty shit.